I fear judgment every single day of my life. Today, being on this stage, my fear just skyrocketed because I know that in one way or another, you will judge my talk. Even though you might be judging it in a positive way, you will st still judge my talk and me as a speaker. Because this is how we humans function. We judge ourselves and others, both in a positive and a negative way, all the time, without even being aware of that, noticing it, or even acknowledging it to ourselves that we actually do that. Or am I wrong? Now, I'm not a scientist, so I will not share with you today any scientific data. Instead, I will share with you the knowledge stemming from encounters with thousands of young women and men coming from different cultures, backgrounds, and ways of living. For nearly a decade, I have been working with youth and women empowerment, trying to create structures within our society which would enable people to express their voices, follow their dreams, and be courageous to be themselves. What is holding people from expressing their voices? What can I do to encourage them to not be afraid to be themselves? How can I create a safe space for people to share their stories, to talk about the topics which matter? These questions I have been asking myself and every single person I have ever worked with every single day of my life for now already 10 years. While the answers worried, there was a common fear prevalent in every single answer. The fear of judgment. People would tell me that they cannot speak in public, open a social business, or show their real self to their loved ones, because they are terrified that if they do so, they will be judged, misunderstood, their colleagues or even their loved ones will turn their backs against them. And eventually they will remain alone. I have always been a strong believer that a personal story can touch people's hearts, impact their lives, and tackle the most sensitive issues um, which we have in our society. Because if we don't talk about all those taboo topics which exist in our societies, we will never be able to change anything. I realized very early on that in order to empower people, to express their voices and to share their stories, I first of all have to help them to transform that fear of judgment into something which brings value to their lives. In this case, sharing powerful personal stories and tackling the most sensitive social issues in the society. And the best way to do so is by sharing my own story and being courageous myself. So let me share with you a part of my story which I mastered to hide for many years, because I, the same as all those other young people, was afraid of judgment. I was even afraid that my own family members will stop communicating with me if I do so. So what is my story? By now you have learned all about my titles and work experiences, but what you don't know is that I chose the path of social change, because for six years, I was struggling with anorexia and bulimia. And I was so ashamed of that, that my own family members for the first four years of that struggle didn't know about that. And because I was ashamed and afraid of that judgment, I ended up coping with it on my own. Until one day, I couldn't take it anymore, and I decided to commit suicide. Luckily, my best friend at that time and my dear grandmother found me on time and they saved my life. But ever since I was asking myself, why did they have to find about it in such a way? And why I was so ashamed to talk about it? Why I was so afraid of that subject? When I was a teenager, I was hanging out with gangsters, which meant that I, that I saw a lot of violence and I had to run uh, several times from a party because I was afraid to be snapped. That was not the most peaceful time of my life, but that was the moment that I re learned that I cannot judge anyone without, at least before listening to their stories, understanding what are their life circumstances which made them choose that path. While I could never justify their actions, neither could I judge them anymore. Instead, 
being only 15 years old, I started asking myself what we as a society can do to prevent those young people coming from difficult social backgrounds to choose that path. How can we show to them that there is another way that they too can have an education and follow their dreams? My very first memory from the age of four is violence at home. And I basically grew up without parents because my father became an alcoholic and my mother, because of the violence at home, developed a mental illness. Now, when you know all this about me, you can really understand why I decided to choose the path of social change. I've always wanted to make sure that I will do everything I can to contribute in creating a more equal, just and healthy society where no one would be ashamed to share their stories, that people would understand that there is nothing to be ashamed to talk about your struggles and all those taboo topics which we have. But as I said, I was afraid for many years until one day my dear friend Nadia from Vietnam reached out to me and invited to join a collaborative book project that 10 women from across the world, who the same as me somehow are considered to be successful today, share their life stories and its struggles with the aim to show to people that no matter from what background do you come from or what happened to you in life, you can always find a way to achieve your dreams. So as you can understand, I accepted the offer without even thinking. But the moment I started writing my part of the book, I got so scared again because of judgment. But I was wondering, is, is it that fear only in my mind or will people actually judge me for sharing my story and talking about all those subjects. So I decided to write a post on Facebook um, to share an intro about my part of the book. I wrote it at night and went to sleep. The next morning, once I woke up, I, it took me about an hour to open my Facebook account. And I don't know how about you, but I'm pretty addicted to social media, so I normally check my Facebook within the first 10 minutes after waking up. But that morning, it took me an hour. That's how terrified I was. But what happened showed me that all that time, that fear was only in my mind. And the biggest judge was not, was not my colleague or a stranger on the street, but my inner judge because there was no single judgment, no hateful comments, and none of my family members stopped communicating with me. Instead, I received hundreds of messages from both women and men telling me that they have been going through the same struggles, and they, the same as me, were so ashamed to talk about it that they, could, they couldn't share it with anyone. Some people asked me for help or advice, people with whom I went to the high school or university together, and even strangers. But there were two people who I will remember until I die. They wrote me that they as well have been going through and struggling with eating disorders. And again, they were so afraid to tell to anyone that they were coping with that on their own. They told me that before, I published my post, they were about to commit suicide. But once they saw me sharing openly about my struggles, we suddenly regained the hope that at least there is one person in this world to whom we can talk about it and we won't be judged. Because once you go through something like this, you can really relate to people who have the same struggles. So we talked and luckily afterwards they decided to open up to their family members and friends and chose to live. Now that not only reminded me how powerful storytelling can be, but that sometimes it can not only empower people, but really save people's life. We never know how one conversation, one single story can impact someone's life. But I was wondering afterwards, so where does this fear of judgment come from? What I learned from Buddhism and meditation, which I have been practicing for seven years, is that sharing personal stories, both in written or spoken form, makes us vulnerable to rejection. If we feel judged by someone, 
we start feeling rejected by our audience, like you, by our colleagues and even loved ones. Our mind automatically starts telling us that we are not worth of love, that our work is insignificant or that our stories are not worth sharing. But as I said, most of the times, the biggest judge is not our colleague or our loved one, it is our inner judge. What I also learned is that the fear of judgment very often comes from the desire to be liked by everyone, even though we subconsciously understand that we cannot be liked by everyone, we still aim for people's approval. And the other thing I learned is that if we lack self-confidence and self-love, we will probably experience this fear more often. Think about it. If you truly love yourself, you stop doubting about your capabilities and the opinion of other people become less significant because now you became a friend to yourself and you finally realize that you don't need to be liked by everyone and that in fact you don't even want to be liked by everyone. So since we can't avoid judgment because it is present everywhere, including within ourselves, what we can do is to transform that judgment into something which brings value to our lives. So now you might ask me, how can we do that? It's easier to say than to do, right? I believe that acceptance is the key. Life is constantly changing, nothing is impermanent. The person who liked you yesterday might dislike you today. If in the morning you feel sad, in the evening you might feel this enormous joy for life. The same goes with the fear of judgment. If you fear right now, you, it might be gone within the next minute or an hour. Just before coming on the stage, I felt so nervous. I thought, wow, it's unbelievable how nervous I am. And I came here and it was all gone. Within a minute, it changed. I want to share you one practice which I learned last year, which really helped me to acknowledge my feelings and emotions and really got deep into my mind with understanding how impermanent everything is. Last year, I went to a Vipassana retreat. It's a form of silent meditation. On the first day, my teacher told me, Carolina, you have to acknowledge all your feelings at all times. Something like this. Whenever you would feel scared, for example, you have to tell to yourself three times that you feel scared. I feel scared, I feel scared, I feel scared. I thought this is crazy, but I was like, okay, well, I have no escape, I'm already here, so let's practice. So for eight days, I have been acknowledging every single emotion I have ever felt three times. And what happened was really amazing. I realized that such a simple practice really taught me how to be present, how to notice my emotions and understand that they are changing all the time. It's like a roller coaster. I didn't even realize how many emotions I have until then. So nowadays you might see me whispering something for myself, like, I feel happy, I feel happy, I feel happy. <laughs> I, I really do it all the time. And the second thing which this practice taught me is that the best way to tackle every single negative emotion or feeling is by practicing love and kindness towards yourself, first of all, and towards the others. Because how someone will ever be able to react towards you in a negative way if you will just react in a loving and kind way? It's not possible because that's our human nature. If someone reacts towards in a positive way, we respond to that, even though we might not like that person, but we still react in the same positive way. And throughout life, uh, what I learned working with all those young people is that we are so good in criticizing ourselves for everything, what we did uh, wrong or what we didn't do, uh, that we don't even need to learn about it anymore. Instead, the next time you will ever feel like you are judging yourself for something, 
why don't you just clap on your shoulder and say, hey, I love myself, it's okay, I did a mistake, I will do better tomorrow. Why do we punish ourselves for every small thing which we do, or something which we wanted to do, but they're not courageous, maybe enough. And I want to finish my talk. Uh, this one quote, which a 21 years old guy, who calls himself Buddy from Vietnam, wrote me a couple of days ago. He wrote, your life should be a story you are excited to tell with both its joys and its struggles. And I really believe in that. I really hope that the next time we meet, these, what I call the taboo topics in the society, would not even exist, because there is nothing ashamed to be yourself. There is nothing to be ashamed of your struggles. We have to talk about it, and we ha can transform all those fears into beautiful stories which can touch people's hearts. We have to allow ourselves to be courageous, to be ourselves, and to share it with ours. Because it matters, every single person in this room or somewhere else, your life matters to me or to someone else. And maybe your story will inspire thousands of people. And even for it might inspire only one and impact only one person's life, that's already enough. We don't need to create massive projects in this world to bring the impact. We can start by ourselves and allow ourselves to be us, both with our beautiful sides, our struggles, our joys and disappointments. So that what my friend just told me a couple of days ago, we would be able to practice in life. Thank you very much.